Good evening, senors and senoritas. This is Creepy and the Bus, and welcome to the plane chase. I will hand this off to the bus, aka the Jack Off Camel. All right, folks. So, uh, essentially, what we have here is a plane chase mode. Uh, essentially, the what, what you're looking at here is I'm playing the blue deck. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's the Jace deck. It's all about milling and things of that nature. So, plane chase, creepy, won't even play it with me um, because it's really obnoxious. Um, I, I love you, Wizards of the Coast. I apologize, but this is just a terrible game mode. So, um, you have to beat a match of a campaign, so go ahead and get it out while you can. Um, the card that I was highlighting there on the field, essentially what you do is everybody gets to roll the plane chase die one time for free. Um, so, if you couldn't tell, by the way, that was the sound of air quotes. Um, so after that, you actually have to start spending your mana, which if you look, there's a little counter that says one on the die. That means that you actually have to spend a mana to roll it. Um, eventually it goes up to two, and then three, and inevitably you have one jackass that the computer is playing that just keeps spending the shit out of mana every turn and not actually playing anything, so it gets super frustrating. I just like to point out, did you notice that the dice roll was a 69? Yeah, yeah, that, that happens a lot. Um, the other thing that you get are encounters, like what you're seeing now, which makes you like keep flipping through the planes. The whole point is that, essentially, if, if you look at what you're actually doing in Magic, as ridiculous as this is going to sound, you are a planeswalker, and so you're jumping from plane to plane, which is where all these different creatures live and everything, and, and using them to, to fight the good fight, as the case may be. Um, so it's uh, it, just just terrible. Um, that's really all there is to it. Um, but so just like a regular four-player match, you're gonna want to pick one person and hope that the computer joins you in gangbanging. Um, so as you kind of see here, I think that I focus on Garrick, uh, just because Garrick's a douche, and really if you're playing a blue deck, then green is about the biggest thing that can just ruin your day. Um, creepy ruins my day pretty frequently every time I play the blue deck, so I don't know what sort of racism there is against blue, but it's there. Ah, uh, it's just a general hatred of you, I guess, let's be honest, it's not about color, man, come on. Uh, that's fair, that's fair. Well, it, it's a little about color for me, like, like red, I'm not a fan of red, mm. so. Um, the, I was hoping too that, you know, there, there's this whole purple color that I was hoping would come out, but, you know, it, it didn't, so it is what it is. Next time, Wizards. Next time. Um, but so, uh, I went ahead and I'm going through just regular game stuff here. You aren't really seeing me use any kind of crazy strategies yet. The crazy strategies come into play later. I am trying to plane chase the hell away from this plane, which I just succeeded in doing because essentially every time that somebody rolled the die on there, you're uh, having to discard a card at random. Um, so it was just a really shitty spot to be. Now creatures randomly get summoned out of graveyards, and, and I'm not afraid to admit it, this is like the seventh time that I've played Plane Chase, when you're looking on here, because I just, the, the, inevitably the computer would just fuck me, one way or the other, and, and it was horrible. Like, uh, Garrick, the last match that we played, which was right before this, like had 32 creatures on the field because he got to pull everybody's graveyard out and then just like gang banged me and then I had to sit there and watch the computer play for a while which was a great time. Uh, there's nothing like watching three AI opponents just go at it with everything that they've got. Especially after they just got done gangbanging you. That's true. That's true. So, uh, Talran, again, uh, like I said, there's always one douchebag that just wants to sit and roll the plane chase die. Uh, shockingly enough, that same logic does apply to actual matches. So, if you go online and are playing a real match, there will be a guy that's just sitting there rolling the crap out of the die every time. So... Now, again, that's a phenomenon, uh, so that chaotic ether, I, I don't even know what that is, but uh, it's making people swap things and everything like that. Uh, I'll tell you one plane to watch out for. There's going to be a plane which has not shown up yet, but uh, every time that somebody attacks with a creature, they get a double of that creature that attacks each other player. Um, that's just a plane ability, they don't have to do anything special. If anybody ever gets that, and they're playing a green deck, go ahead and forfeit the game. Um, I, I was like, no, 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 surely I can win. You can't. It's not possible. So, 
uh, that you're seeing a whole bunch more different plane stuff here kind of as things go on the interplanar tunnel um, that's another phenomenon uh, you guys can kind of read what what the cards do there but each one's a different effect if you remember the arch enemy game mode from the last game it's very similar but these uh, effects uh, happen for everybody instead of just for one opponent and there's no increased life total or anything like that so uh, the the biggest thing here too to kind of see so as you can see a lot of these are making tokens happen extremely quickly like replacing the number of creatures on the field try and mitigate the effects that are coming off of that plane deck as much as possible that uh, the blue deck honestly is the easiest deck to actually win a match with on here. Um, the green deck, you know, of course is easy if you get the same situation that I was just talking about where you get that one particular plane. But otherwise, the blue deck here, you don't actually have to kill them. Uh, your whole point there is to just make them lose cards. So if you get things like the Dreamborn Muse, which I have out on the table, that makes them lose as many cards as are in their hand every turn so it's a lot easier to focus on milling people and making them draw themselves out and discard things than it is actually trying to kill them uh garrick has way too much life a johnny has way too much life gain and every match that you play to start the campaign is exactly what you're seeing you can't change the opponents or anything like that and the achievement which is what we're trying to get here for a plane chase victory only comes from you fighting a Johnny, Talrand, and Garrick. So, the the old Grove of the Dream Bots is a good time too. It gives you some plus one, plus one counters. Uh, time distortion is always a good time. <laughs> so, uh, there there was a whole bunch of ridiculous stuff. Which exactly what you're seeing here is why Creepy won't play it with me. <laughs> There's just way too many shenanigans. Well, it's not that I don't want to play, but I mean, like, I, I like the game and, you know, unlocking the decks and, you know, I, I'm all about playing the game, but this is just like, I mean, we're rolling, you know, 69s, we're rolling magic and changing into, you know, interplanetary tunnels and I mean there's so much happening here I think I would literally just lose and then not even understand why it would just be the most frustrating thing in the world and that happens enough when I play against you so you know I don't need the computer to kill me as well yeah give me some free-for-all magic any day over this kind of thing uh, four-player magic is one of my favorite things to do too so it actually takes a whole lot of effort to make me say the hateful things that I'm saying right now um, which, speaking of hateful things, uh, fortunately we're editing this at a later time, because uh, if you actually would have heard me like live as I was playing this match, we probably couldn't have posted it on YouTube. So, uh, the one of the bigger things here too is that uh, by playing the blue deck, any time that this token bullshit comes out here, which, which happens really frequently as you're seeing, um, your remove creature from the battlefield and into your hand will actually kill token creatures. So instead of being like, hey, like, yeah, go back to your hand, or whatever, like normal, you can actually get rid of some of these tokens. Uh, it's a lot better than spending like the three or four or five mana on a black or a white deck to get rid of the creature. It makes your life much, much easier. Which, as you can see there, so you're seeing the whole point of a mill deck. If you look at all those cards that just went into Garrick's graveyard, he lost his 8-8 trample, he lost... Well, I should say one of his 8-8 tramples. He lost a whole bunch of his other shit. Um, it's really just a spectacular time. Uh, which I was looking there to see how many cards were in the graveyard so that I could see if my little flyer dude would actually be a 5-5 yet, which he is not. Um, but he will be soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, the, the little runic buffalo is an asshole, by the way. Uh, if, if you get him in the regular game, uh, all my friends who play green decks are always dropping him. He's hexproof, which I uh, give you all a quick magic lesson here. Hopefully you guys know if you're watching the Plane Chase video. Otherwise, if Plane Chase is your first incursion into magic, I apologize. Uh, but the, the little runic buffalo has hexproof. Uh, means that the only people that can target it are you. And that's it. So I don't know why I used the word people, but that's okay. We'll go with it. Uh, Otherwise, nobody else can remove it, get rid of it, or anything else, unless they have a target everything ability, which Creepy and I were talking about this the other night. We have another friend uh, who goes by the handle Rosen Rosen there, who got ragingly upset when I played a card that cleared the table because he had some hexproof and shrouded stuff. Um, I had to explain to him that, hey, uh, when you're playing it, 
just because they have Shroud and Hexproof doesn't mean that they're immune to everything. It only means that they can't be targeted. So any cards that say, hey, this gets rid of everything, or this happens to every creature, or every creature an opponent controls, that, that card's still fucked. There, there's no way of getting around. And I'd like to say that I've, I've finally come to terms with the fact that no matter what I put out there, I, I've accepted that I'm going to lose it, and so it doesn't make me mad. That is just complete crap. I just rage out, uh, and God, it's like driving. I mean, it's just road rage, but sitting in front of my TV, it's embarrassing. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it's, uh, it, magic is like driving, like driving magical creatures across the field to kill your opponent. That's uh, it's about one of my favorite. Things. Wow, wait, wait, to, wait to bring that analogy home. I yeah. like it. I do I like it. That's uh, there, there's any ima- or analogy that has magical creatures in it is a better analogy. So I would agree with that. That's what the which uh, another friend of mine was talking to me online and telling me about that Dreamscape movie. Do you remember that, mm-hmm. Dennis Quaid? I do. So he said that magic was based off of that. I promptly called him a moron right after that. So it's a fair assessment. It was a good time. Um, so that uh. That Archive Trap, um, another great card. Uh, you're going to see me actually pay for it here. That always makes me a little sad. Uh, the best time to use it is actually when somebody is searching their library. Because uh, trap cards were introduced a couple of games ago there. Um, but if somebody does whatever effect it says on the trap, you get to play the trap for zero cost. So having that in your hand is a great way to make somebody lose 13 cards off the top of their deck which the typical deck is only 60 cards, so you know, you're getting rid of about 20% of their deck there um, with one card, which is a great time if you can cast it for zero mana towards the beginning of their game. Uh, best decks to use that against are things like the Exalted deck. The Exalted deck has uh, basic lands that say if you put that into play, then you can sacrifice that land to search your library for another land card. Um, so if they do that, then they're basically screwing themselves, which is spectacular. But the, uh, so the other thing that I'm holding on to in my hand is kind of like what we were talking about there with the token removal. You're going to see a counter spell, which I don't really have the mana to play. Um, but then you're also going to see a three mana creature that lets me play it and then return a target creature to its own hand. So we're still doing some more plane chasing here, which we're on Innistrad right now, which gives all creatures vigilance. That's a ridiculous ability. Um, So when they roll the die, by the way, let's explain the die here real quick. So when you roll the die, if you get the 69 symbol, as uh, Creepy puts it, that actually activates whatever the planar effect is. So uh, if that plane's ability is like every time that you roll the planar whatever symbol. We're going to call it the 69 symbol from now on. But if you ever roll the 69 symbol, then like they take three damage. Then that's why you see that little douche up at the corner always rolling the die to see if he can get the 69 symbol. If you roll the weird fork thing, um, then that makes you actually plane shift, which now we're on the Xerxes. Um, I think we probably call the weird fork thing the magic symbol. Uh, I prefer a weird fork thing. I mean, we'll stick with it. It's whatever plays. I think that, you know, Wizard was just like, hey, I want a fork. Um, we're going to make that the magic symbol. Which... Or a soul comb. It's, it's really tough to decide. <laughs> nice. Chris yeah. would say that, at least. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, so, Mount Corellia there. Um, it's much like the Star Wars planet. Uh, but the, So, essentially, what that does is every turn you put a counter on it. This is my least favorite plane in the game. Uh, every single upkeep, it gets a counter. When you plane shift away from it, it does the damage of the number of counters to you and every creature on the field. So everybody, like let's say that you take seven turns before you plane shift away from it, um, then you actually take seven damage uh, to all of your creatures and to yourself and every player on the table. So. Um, again, how I said that I lost a whole lot of times, there was one match that I lost entirely by plane shifting away from that too late, uh, which you'll see here in a second, I will actually just roll the shit out of that die trying to get away from here. Um, like I said, hands down my least favorite thing, so. Uh, but first, I'm, I'm milling out everybody a little bit, trying to spread the love there. Um, got a couple of people down into double and single digit cards, so. I'm closing in on the win. I left Talrand because there's so many things in the Jace blue deck that will just ruin Talrand's day. So there's really no point in you focusing on him. There's 
literally nothing that he can really do to you to actually stop you if you have a pretty good opening hand. Um, so, you know, you'll see me attack him with cards just kind of for fun. Uh, again, because he can't really do anything. It's kind of like beating up a three-year-old or taking a Skylander from them. Or punching old people. I mean, you know, it's not a whole lot thing really do about it. Now, the green deck, though, same thing. You don't want to let him hang around because, obviously, the more crap he gets on the field, he can just take a raging swing at you and just you're not going to have a whole lot to defend against that. Um, I have an interesting question, though. Uh, so for the Johnny deck, will that uh, the, the old uh, the old card that gives you the old victory at 40 plus life does that come into play here? Fortunately, it does not. Um, so here's the good news there. So that card is ridiculous. Um, you, you've heard us talk in other videos about like some of the other stuff that you can get, which I just killed Garrick by the way. He only had two cards left, so he actually drew himself out, which is always a good time. I really even have to do anything extra. Um, but the, so the Ajani deck has a card in it that is a 4-6 Vigilance creature, which means that it does not tap to attack, so it can tap and attack and block and everything all in the same turn. Um, it also has lifelink to it, and the best thing about it, which is what Creepy's talking about, is that if you get to 40 life, then you win the game. Uh, fortunately, the computer apparently does not have that card unlocked in the plane chase mode, so, uh, okay. yeah. It's just like, no, no, you're actually useless. It's the, the crappy version of a Johnny. Like, I think that the best thing that he has in the deck is he has the card that's like a 7-7 seven, seven and gives you 3 life on every upkeep, which I think he tries to pull out on me uh, at the end here. But, big, big fan of that card. Yeah, it, big it's, fan. that's a spectacular card. If you can get the Soul Warden, which is a 1-1 one, one that gives you 1 life uh, every time a creature comes into play, a Johnny's Pride Mate, which is a 1-1 one, one that gets a plus 1, plus 1 counter every time that you gain life. And then the 7-7 seven, seven that gives you 3 life on every upkeep. You've won the game. Um, it's so tough for people to beat you, it's unbelievable. Now, so you just have a ridiculous amount of creature destruction and stuff. Which I think that you actually saw the other night, and I think that you did that to me. So. Yes, yeah, so, well, when I was playing it, and I literally got all that stuff and just kept putting it out, knowing full well that... I was going to test just how much creature destruction everybody had, and I'll be damned if you guys didn't have a shit ton of creature destruction. Like I said, that, that's the only real flaw to that plan. Um, so, uh, the, you know, the other downside to putting stuff like that out, and uh, you know, being the guy that's constantly rolling the plane chase die, which if you look, so again, like I said, Talrand is, is the captain of plane chase. He just rolls the shit out of that die every possible turn he can. Like, look, the, so he's got five cards in his hand, he's got six mana on the table, but why would I play something? Let's just, let's keep spending that mana to roll that die and see what happens. Um, so he, he's not really very good at the game, which works out in your benefit. Um, which, by the way, we're also playing on the normal difficulty here. But uh, anytime that you are playing the computer and you're like, hey, I've got this great creature that I can put out really early on. Like, let's say that you can put out the 3-3 three, three guy that generates a wolf every turn on, like, turn 4. Um, great strategy if you're playing against your friends, because they're like, oh, well that's cool. And they might try and get rid of it. Apparently, if you're playing the computer in a four-person match, the computer's like, oh, I see, so we have to kill you. And every person that, uh, or every computer player, I should say, will attack you every turn with everything that they have. So, uh, what you need to do is pretend like you're as dumb as the computer is, and then they like you better, and you can usually trick them into letting you win. Uh, sounds ridiculous, but I promise you it's true. There is something in the code that's just like, oh no, 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 if anybody gets one of these legendary or mythic rare cards out on the table, then the computer is programmed to just try and kill you with everything they've got. Now, if you put out a common that's a really good common, they don't even notice. They're like, oh yeah. It's good. Let it play. So, um, which here, I believe that we're almost about to finish off Talrand. I'm going to go ahead and start attacking our, our little Johnny friend over there. Uh, he's at 34 life, so um, I'm not sure why. I, I mean, I guess that they were like, hey, he's a cat person, so he's got nine lives, so he's all about healing. Apparently. Uh, yeah, if you actually look at the, the magic sets... Um, there's two real cool decks for Nicobolus, who's the boss of this game, which we have a video for beating Nicobolus as well. 
uh, but then there's a, another set for Johnny, and if you look at his real deck, it's like a green-red beatdown deck, what's commonly referred to as a bloody booger, uh, and instead, Sexy. they were like, oh yeah, it's a good time. Uh, the, the bloody boogers are always a party. But uh, for some reason, they were like, no, 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 it makes more sense for him to be angelic, which I'm not totally sure how they got that, but I guess it is what it is. So. Mm -hmm. Cool thing about this game, too, folks, if you don't know, or if you are into to real magic at all, I don't know how much of our viewer audience that will be, um, but so the Friday night magic events are super cool. If you do like it, you can actually get real cards and things like that. No, this is not a shameless plug for magic, by the way. We don't have sponsors yet, wink, but uh, yeah, it's a, uh, so one cool thing, though, is that they did go ahead and put Magic 13 or M13 cards in this set. So some of the cards that you're playing with in the game are from a block that, as of right now, has not yet been released. So that's really cool. Kind of gives the, the digital players or just fans of the game a little bit of an advantage there. Um, it's very rare that things come to the Xbox market first like that. Um, usually it's only video game stuff that does, which is cool. But, but a pretty good preview for them, too, to get that out there and kind of get a little excitement going about it. <laughs> Absolutely, which is why they give you the Zaphid Gorgon as a, uh, a card, too. If you see when you first sign into your Magic game, they're like, hey, we have this premium foil card for you, and that's the Zaphid Gorgon, which, uh, again, is one of Creepy's favorite cards. So, it's uh, the any time that you can tap that and turn things into defenders, however... I will go ahead and give you all some insight into a mistake that was made when we were playing the other night. Just because you turn them into a petrified defender does not mean that they aren't still useful. The only thing that it stops them from doing is using their activated abilities or, uh, you know, actually attacking. So, the Hedron Fields of Agadim here, by the way. So, uh, creatures with a power 2 or greater can't attack, which is what saves my life here. Um, so one, my cards can't attack, but, uh, so I go ahead and get, like, a little 2-2 two -two guy or 7-7 seven -seven guy or whatever with Annihilate there. Yeah, that's a pretty big range, but we're just gonna go with it. Um, the, so Annihilate is in the old game. Uh, every time that you swing him, your opponent actually has to sacrifice a creature. So the reason that that card was important is because it gave me that, which gave me a little bit of extra creatures to fight him with, um... Since his stuff is still tapped, I am close to killing him, killing him, even though he's at 37 life. I have quite a few creatures, but he's about to draw himself out, too. Um, anytime that you're in single digits against the blue deck, the blue deck can absolutely mill you out in one turn. So, pretty incredible. But, you're going to see him give it one last ditch effort to try and kill me here, which is weird because he doesn't attack with everything. Um, so, you know, again, we are playing on the normal difficulty here, but uh, I have no real excuse or explanation for why the computer struggles. I mean, sometimes a computer suffers from the retard that thinks you are in most of these challenges, so, I mean, yeah, that's the only, that's the only conclusion that I have for it. Maybe it just, it felt so bad for you, and where you start off in the challenges, that it wanted to kind of share in your pain a little bit there, so. Uh, and there's the win card there, I drew the old mind sculpt. Uh, that's game over, so um, always a good time. We still have to wait for it to get back to his turn here before you actually see the game over, but you all can see what we're talking about with the plane chase cards. So essentially all that you're doing, really trying to avoid the plane chase as much as possible, uh, save most of your cards to defend, play the blue deck, it's way easier. Um, I do have a fully unlocked version of the blue deck, but otherwise it's totally normal. Um, so, nothing extra that we have, and there we go, challenge complete, you are now the Maelstrom Wanderer. Yes, you've won a whole lot of crap, you've unlocked a whole lot of crap, and for all of you uh, partygoers who held on for this long in the video, congratulations, you are a super fan.